About four weeks ago, I had a phone call from an old friend of mine, Alan Whiting, who writes for off-road magazines. He said he had to do an article on a four-wheel drive convention in Broken Hill. As I was just about to do a trip out west, I asked him which way he was going. Oh, straight out through Cobar, he replied. Now the main road through Cobar and Dubbo is a nice drive, but if you've travelled it as many times as I have, it can be boring at times. So I suggested that he join me, as I was travelling from Condoblin to Menindi along the railway track. And as it's only about 100k or so from Broken Hill to Menindi, it would not be out of his way. So we pre-arranged to meet just out of West New Avalon. We're at West New Avalon and we're going to follow the railway line all the way through to Menindi. Now this is going to be a trip and a half because as you can see along the railway line just here before we even start, there's a lot of water. Now we're really going to test these vehicles out, but you'll see some really exciting wildlife and places where a lot of people don't go. Come with me now. Alan said he would wait just along the track, and it's not long before we find his truck. And I've just come onto his car here, I don't know where he is, but we'll go and have a look for him. I think he's in the bush. There you are, Al. G'day, Frank. I'm looking for you, mate. Where you been? Oh, I just found you around the here. I don't know what you're getting for. Play a railway spot. Railway line. What have you been looking at? This broom bush, Al? Yeah. You know the story of it, mate? No, not really. This is what they make all those fences out of, all those brush fences and that. Oh, yeah? And they cut that, and they lay it in a cradle, and they pack it down real tight, and then they make these fences. Oh, yeah, okay. Now if you look at this pipe, here with the seed on it, yeah. that's second grade. Uh -huh. I'll show you a bit around here in a minute what they call first grade. Right. This stuff's really expensive, but Yeah, too right. It's all the rage, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's a good year too. And it grows everywhere out here. Well, we've got fences for free out here. <laughs> Don't have to pay for it like the city slicker. It's the good stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, no seeds in it. No seeds in it. See, that's a really yeah. top gear, that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Pretty interesting, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it looks better growing in than it does tied in fences, oh, actually. Oh, yeah, 100% <laughs> that's where it should stay. <laughs> exactly. After our nature lesson on the South Australian broom bush plant, it's time to hit the track. As Alan informs us, he has only three days before he has to be in Broken Hill. It's only about 20k and we find a road sign. After a lot of discussion amongst the crew, we still don't know what it is. It could be a road sign to heaven as it's pointing up, but I'm not ready to go that way yet. We travel along the south side of the railway line. The side track is lined with mulga. Now mulga is a type of gum tree that does not grow very high. Two reasons. One, the lack of rainfall. And two, the soil in most places where mulga grows is very poor. The early pioneers cleared a lot of this grub, as they called it, only to find after a couple of years the grass stopped growing and the winds came and blew the precious tops all away. Many responsible farmers are replanting the mulga as they try to save the land before it's too late for future generations. One grazier must have a good piece of land as he is spraying a crop, probably wheat, with an aeroplane. At times he must be only a few feet off the ground. Up at one of the little old sidings, There's nothing left of it here now. They've got bulldozers in, they've pushed it all over. This probably was one of their beds, probably a real good looking bed at one stage. What we found now, just a few broken little bits of crockery, 
a glass out of a window or something. Over here is their pride and joy of fridge. There's nothing left. Somebody lived out here at one stage with all their little dreams and that. But it's all gone now. Stan, my cameraman, says the last time he was here, there were a couple of houses just over here. Just a few other little things around here. They must have children. An old tobacco tin. He probably painted his house. There is no water, food or even people at Malakanka, so if you break down, use your shirt or coat to flag the train driver, as he will not stop if he doesn't see you. Betty's worried about our bedding getting wet in the camper matting as we drive through the water and mud, and a reminder of a friend of mine, Wally, who took a camper matting to Cape York, and if he can go through the water and dust like he did up in Cape York, I'm not going to have any trouble on this trip. Well, he thinks he's driving a boat, but the Toyota and Campermatic handle it like pros they are. I pull up to have a look at one big bog hole, and it's a mistake. For this red soil is as slippery as butter when it's wet, and I cannot get going again. So it's into four wheel drive, reverse a little, and it's all systems go again. This 78 series Toyota has no trouble at all. It's not long and it's time for the nose bag to go on. The funny thing is we've lost the tomato. Somebody feeds the tomato. And if they're not visible, it's because they're really flat tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> well I thought they might have fallen the street. Well, what do we do with this, Gina? Just cut it. Alan is amazed how easy the kitchen sink slides out of the side of the campermatic, also giving us a good workbench to make lunch. <laughs> this fellow had a little bit of trouble there, apparently he couldn't get out. <laughs> and he was stuck here for New Year's Eve. Got one of those rude words, so I put the cross and hand across it in case the kids see it.
this was a device they had for unloading wheat. The trucker drive on here, tip his load, go down through the grates there, into a conveyor and up onto the wa uh, rail wagons. It's no longer needed because they've got the great big silos in town there and they can cart it in there by semi-trailers. But it's a shame all this is going to waste now. Radda is the same as Malakanka, the houses have been bulldozed down and all that remains is the station, grain loader, an old water tower and what used to fill the steam trains and a community hall. Stan and Alan love to inspect the old railway cars. Now this hall is the only building left standing really from the old times in Roto. Just up the road here they had 10, 15 houses 20 years ago. And apparently the railway has come through and bulldozed them down. Nobody could live in them, I suppose they were derelict. All the tea and now as I've just said this hall, shed out there and a couple of little things around the railway line. What year is that? 58. We're just having a look through the old documents that are left in the hall here. One of the bank statements, 1958, they had uh, 12 12 pound, 18 and 7 pence. I'm flat out to remember how to say it now. But this part's interesting. I know from today, and our modern farmers and country people out here are having problems with droughts and money lending and uh, everything else from the banks and so forth. But it's interesting, 1958 they had a coping with a raw crisis. And it goes on here, this document, and it goes on here how to Back in that time, in 58, the country people were still having problems. And I don't think it's changed much. Country people adapt to anything. Look, look at this old stump. It's a foundation to build a house on. They've went out and they've cut it. They've just sawed it off, stuck it in the ground, and built their community hall on it. After all these years, it still works. Now this little town, at one stage, as I told you earlier, had 10, 12, 15 houses here a thriving little community. It's very sad now to see it the way it is. Just got a little pool left. It's time to make camp. Now I've attended quite a few caravan shows over my time and people have asked me how long does it take to put up one of these little things. Now we're just going to let the camera go and we're not going to edit it so you'll get a fair idea yourself exactly how long it takes you to put up one of these little camper matics. Right up, you ready Al? Oh, yeah. Pull that middle plug. No Let's hope she comes. And that's it. How long did that take? Can't get any easier than that, can you? And Betty's got a house for the night. Betty's delighted there is no water Hop or in dust now. in the camper matic. Hop in. That do you for the night? Oh, yes. We have a look too. Oh, we'll get in here and make this rock. Alan is using an odd tent and he has never put one up before. Dan and Sheena have had one for eight years and they love it. Sheena can't wait to show Alan how easy it is. Let's get to it. Right, uh, you're the boss. Okay, there you go, you zip up 
Gee, they're hard work, aren't they? Oh, gosh, yeah. I think we've got to have a drink now. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. What a good mm. idea. Just as they finish, our first train goes by. Put in a bit of garlic and a bit of oil in there. I'm going to make a spaghetti bolognese tonight for the crew. Now in goes some onion. Oop. And we're just going to stir that around to the browns. We'll leave that there till it browns. Now I'm on the main track still going west. Tomorrow we should get into Ivanhoe and we're still going further than after that up to uh, Menindee. But tonight the main thing is we'll get this spaghetti well and maize going. Now that's starting to look good. I'll just brown that up. I'm going to put a bit of mince in there. Then put some tomatoes and a few other little things. In go the mince. Day grade mince, not too much fat. I've got to watch my weight. Break it up so it mixes up with the onions. Getting a bit hot there. Now what I've had to do is shift this pot or camp oven away from the heat a bit because this is mulga and mulga is very very hot and if I was to leave it on the main flame it'd burn that in no time at all. So as you can see there I've just got to sit on two or three little coals and you can hear it bubbling and I've got to keep stirring and it'll still burn it. That's how hot this wood is. Now in any of my recipes and that that I do I always tell you to it's going to take whether the heat depends on the coals you're burning. Now if you're burning this vulgar don't use very many coals at all otherwise you're going to burn everything in your camp oven. Right that's ready for some tomatoes. We'll drop a few tomatoes in there Oh, that's starting to look good now. Chop them up so they get all mixed up with the spaghetti. And not everybody puts this in. There's a little bit of red wine. Got to have a bit of red wine, get a bit of flavour in it. Oh, it's starting to look good now. Keep it in the pot, Tom. Keep it in the pot, mate. God, I'm getting careless tonight. A little bit of tomato sauce to sweeten it up. A little bit of hot sauce. That's going pretty good now. I'll just sit the lid on. And still, again, move it back even further from the heat and just let it simmer there. And now all I've got to do is boil some spaghetti. Spaghetti bolognese. Alan wants to get a shot for his story with the two Toyotas in the sunset. So we travelled back one kilometre where we crossed the railway line. As we wait for the sun to go down, I notice the colour of the two Toyotas. Mine is reasonably clean where Alan is very dirty. 
we come to the conclusion it's the bull bar on Alan's car. On the ute, the wind is not restricted and passes over the vehicle as it is designed to by Toyota. It's designed that the wind takes most of the dirt and dust with it as it passes over the car. When a bull bar is fitted, these wind vanes are restricted. Perfect little campsite. After dinner comes the best part of camping, sitting around the campfire. Here we all catch up on what we've been doing since we last met. When you have a clear sky and a full moon out in these plains, in the middle of the year you can respect a cold night and a heavy frost in the morning. About 2am in the morning our second train arrives and it sounds like it's coming straight through the camp. As the morning awakes, everybody thinks of breakfast. Just another alternative that you can do with the lid of your camp oven. It doesn't take very long. Just turn it over. We're going to have a bit of bacon and eggs and toast this morning off the camp oven. Right, uh, now we're going to have the eggs. We're going to do the old toad. Oh, don't try to get too much fat on them from the bacon. Get a bit of fat. Oh, look at that. Get the flavour out. Well, right, now the eggs. Bit breaking on them. The red marker. Gone. Won't be five minutes, and that'll be all cooked. Right, now all you got to do now is just flip the egg over. If you want it a little hard, leave it in there a bit longer. You want it soft, take it off just about now. Now after everything's cooked, all you got to do is turn it over and the fat will get burnt off the lid. Ten minutes it'll be clean. A couple of hours down the track and we come upon an unfortunate reality, a rail kill. So these trains got hundreds of tons on it and they got no chance of stopping and these silly old cows wander up onto the train line. They're not fenced, they can't afford to fence them out here and it's just another kill. And there's another reality, locusts. Come and catch me a locust. Now these locusts are a plague. These are only little fellas, they haven't gone big enough yet to start laying their eggs and then their eggs will hatch. I've never seen a season like this out here. Everything is beautiful and green. And as soon as it gets like that out here in the west, on come the locusts. Now there's one rule out in the bush, and it's a simple rule, and you've got to keep to it, and it's about gates. Whatever you find closed, close it after you go through. If the gate's open, when you go through, leave it open, because it could be a, uh, an entrance and some water for, for stock. If you close it, the stock go without water and end up dying. And if it's closed, it's closed for a reason, because it could be a boundary and stop one lot of fella stock getting them mixed up with another. So just close your gates or leave them open, whichever way you find them. Oh, just what we didn't want, a body of water. We may get through the first lot with the Toyotas, as they're pretty good in the mud, but I've walked up the track a bit and there is miles of it, so it's back we must go. Just a couple of manoeuvres and we're able to turn around. I'm very happy that I have a campermatic on the back. Anything else and I would have been in real trouble. The Toyota with its lock and the camper with its mobility make it look easy. 
Now we have to go north to get around the water. We find a bit of a track, I think it's the main road. that you've got behind you, it doesn't obstruct it at all. If you have a look through my rear vision mirrors, on the side ones and even the centre one, you'll notice that I can see everything that's behind me. Anybody that's a bit dubious of towing and uh, wants to get the feel of it first, this is the way to go. One of these little uh, camper medics is no problem at all. In fact, I don't even know it's on there half the time. It's not too long and we find the railway again, and a siding. At this time, two houses are standing, but only just. best part I love about discovering Australia, discovering Australia's past. Have a look here. just like down the road of Rodo. Everybody had their little dreams. They had, as you can see, a brick fireplace. Pretty solid old place. When they took the work away, the dreams went with it. People had to move out of the bush again. He even had his long necks. Not bad stuff either, but it was full. And they must have had children too, because he's ahead of one of their toys. <laughs> hey, come, mate. How long ago did you live here? Oh, a few years ago, about 30 years ago, before they kicked me out. I run into Ernie and he shows me his cactus plants. The other old house has some odd things in it, like this bale of wool. I would have thought it was too valuable to leave here. With the endless noise of the windmill in the background, we have to move on. This road was impassable last week, as you can see the tracks where someone cut into it. The next siding is in a derelict state. We're at Canova, I hope you fellas have got a ticket. <laughs> I got a ticket out. <laughs> I've got a ticket but no train. Right? No, I think you'll be waiting for a while. I hope you've got a tucker bag, you're going to need it. See so one coming? No. All one going. <laughs> no, I think you'll be here for a while. <laughs> they don't run too often, do they? No. Underutilised track, I think. Yeah, sure. About 30 kilometres along the track we hit another bog hole and Alan slides into a soft spot. Got a bit of trouble out. Yeah. 
Yeah, this stuff's a bit slimy. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, I've had a fair bit of rain through here, mate. Yeah, we'll do a bit of winching and then... Um, we might have to go back, mate. Yeah, I think so. Have a look up there a bit further, see how we go. Yeah, we'll probably we'll, find the next we'll gully just as bad. Get out of here first and then we'll have a look. After getting out and out, we have a look at the track ahead and decide that it would take days to get through. So we decide to go bush. But first we have to get the campermatic out of the bog. As we're about to hook on to the ute again, the train goes past, heading west. This train starts me thinking. It has a few ordinary wagons up front, but the last 15 cars are semi-trailers. They just jack up the semi and put a bogey underneath, and it's on its way to Perth. If utilised, this concept would take a lot of semis off the road, and this has got to save lives and money for road repairs. Back to the job ahead. We have to head bush again. This time the road is quite a way north and we will have to use our compass to find it. It does not get any more off road than this. On a cloudy day, you would go around in circles if you did not have a compass. It's not long and we hit the road again. Just as we hit the bitumen, a few miles out of Ivanhoe, we, we come upon what I was showing Alan earlier, a load of South Australian broom bush. Ivanhoe, just like all these outback towns where they've taken the work out of, is asleep. Just a few shops, one of the petrol stations has shut down, and even the pub looks deserted. But we find what the girls are looking for. A loo where they can sit down. Dan's finds fuel, and there is even accommodation out the back. I've not seen one of these for a long time. When I was a kid, this is what they used as a scraper to shift dirt. It looks like nothing like the monsters they use today. Well, it's time to make camp again. Dan can't believe how easy the camper Matic goes up and wants to give me a hand. Tonight we're on roast leg of pork. Now all I've done with that is rub a bit of salt into it and then I've just smeared a little bit of butter over it. 
going to put that on the flame over there, or the coals. Not very much heat at all. We've all just had a nice shower. Alan went and dived in the dam and it's nearly freezing, nearly killed him while the roast is cooking. But the girls want their cocktail, so we're going to get a cocktail for them. Now we're just going to use a little bit of this blue decayer, cocoa. Simple one, this one. It's a quick cocktail tonight. But if I don't give them a cocktail, I'll have no peace. A bit of lemonade in it. And that's my version. A quick version of a blue angel. Hey Betty, where are you? Takes me a while to round them up when cocktail time is. Good chair. I think Sheena, our sound lady, Thank deserves you. a cocktail after gathering the wood. Thank you, Frank. Betty, our little writer. Thank you. It's more <laughs> than we can say with the camera then, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> But that fire is very hot. Now, I'm only going to leave that on a very slow heat for a couple of hours, then we'll try it. Should be pretty close by then. Done. Now, there's a couple of dams where we camped tonight, just out of Ivanhoe. Now, if it was summertime, I know I'd go and catch some of these big blue yabbies in them. But as it's getting closer to the winter, whether the yabbies have gone into the mud, you won't get them back out again until about the November, end of October, November. But I'm just hoping that they haven't gone into the mud yet. And if they haven't, I'll have a couple. Tie that in there. Can't pull it along. Is it beer time? That's all we got to do. Yeah, mate, it's beer time. Yabby time, beer time. I don't go anywhere without my little opera house net. And that's all they are. They look like the opera house. Yabby will go in there after a bit of meat. Then he can't get out. And I've got him. Ha ha ha! Those are the little holes that I'm looking for. Now just hope that the water hasn't got too cold and put them to sleep. They go into the mud and they sleep for a little while in the winter time. But this being a dam, they might be awake for me. What we're going to do, we put the dam just on a little bit of string, hang on the end of the string, and out goes our little opera house net. And that's all we got to do. They won't pull it away. Just lay the string on that. Now they're the cranes, blue cranes usually, or white cranes. That's their little mark as they walk along the edge of the dams. And they're looking for the yabby too. So here's my competition tonight. There's none around at the moment, but they'll be here first thing in the morning. Now there's two dams here. I've put all my nets in the top one because that has permanent water in it. Now what happens, when this dam overflows, it runs through a pipe into that dam so they don't waste any of the water. And then there's the outlet if it's a great big flood or there's an outlet. But this dam will have water in it when this other one hasn't because, it's, as I said, this one fills up first, overflows into that one. We had a little disaster and the pork was a little bit too big for the camp oven and just where it touched at the top it was a, dried it out a fraction that sort of goes with being in the bush a bit but the meat rest of it has turned out beautiful let's have a look at this look at that, the juice is still in it and it's going to be delicious, I've got to taste a bit of that Magnificent. That's beautiful. Now I just cooked a few spuds, carrots, yeah. a bit of sweet potato. Jeez, we're doing it hard, aren't we? <laughs> but we're living well. 
last night when we camped on the plains, as you know out here, when there's no clouds, all the stars are out, you end up with a frost. And we were pretty cold. Anyway, tonight, I promise Betty, will be the warmest toast. So what we're going to do, I'll show you an old trick. Lovely hot coals. Now I'm just going to put the lid on and I'll take it into the camper van and show you how not to burn your camper van down. Now that's it. Let's sit it in that hole. Electric, no touch it. Like that. And what I've done here, that's an old electric frying pan. I had laying under the house for years doing nothing. Now, I've lined it with alfoil so the heat will come up, it won't hurt the floor. As you can see, the legs are down here. Look, you can put your hands underneath it, won't hurt you. You can pick it up by the handles, won't hurt you. But don't touch this. Now when we do up the little camper tonight, this will just warm this little area up beautiful. Whoa. We got any? There's one in there, two in there. Alright, we're going to have a look at our little witches hats this morning. Yep, we got a couple. We're getting about this many out of each net. There's a few in there and a few juveniles. I'll just sort the juveniles out throw them back. If I was going fishing for yellow belly or cod, I'd be using them as bait. They're excellent bait for cod in these inland rivers. Anyway, I'll show you what I've got. If you don't bite me, come out of here. Oh, we want to bite the other fella. See? And that's what we call them, the Australian yabby. Well, I'll pull that. He's grabbed out of somebody's leg. He's pulling somebody's leg. They also got little claws on the leg, see? They can give you a little nip of them too, see? Ooh. But these fellas here, they're a bit like a crab. See how they got a big teeth on the fr front of them? Whoop. They will bite you, I can tell you. And if you can see those claws, they'll really give you a nip. Now, I put these in the fridge, and they're pretty well asleep. So we're just gonna put them in here. In they go. What we've got here is a hole in the top, comes down to the bottom here, just above where somebody's cut into it, about six inches down is the finish of the hollow where the bird builds his nest. Now a poacher's come along, he's cut a hole into the tree, reached in and grabbed the young birds. Now there seems to be a big market for this, but they're doing a terrible thing in the bush taking these young birds. And that's how it works. Right, the yabbies are cooked. Now we just pull them out. Look at that. Oh, beef for a king. It's hard doing it hard in the bush. Isn't it? Now that one might be still a bit warm, Al. Oh, we'll chance it. Right, Al. Yeah, I hate going bush with you, Tomo. We have to suffer this, I don't know, we? I know, mate. It's hard work. No. Still, someone's got to do it, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Sure they're fresh, mate. Oh, I could have cooked them last night, some of them. <laughs> but I never caught them till this morning. Mmm. They're beautiful. Look at that. Mmm. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. You can handle another one? Oh, probably. Help yourself. Yeah. Done. I think I'll have a little one. You can always drink the cores. Huh? Yeah, I'm saving the claws till later. When we break camp, it's too wet to follow the railway line. So it's along the road we go. I have not told Betty yet, but she gets to wash the car when we get back.
we can just see the railway line and to our amazement there is some derelict buildings so we decide to investigate. It's an old train loader. After a lot of discussion, we still don't know what it was that they used to load here. There is plenty of it about, but no one knows what it is. Stan sees something duck under a piece of tin and talks me into lifting it. He says he wants to fill in what's under it. I'm a bit dubious. I don't like snakes. Now, when you look at both ends of him, you don't know which one to pick up. That's what the that's one of his defence mechanisms. Something comes along and goes to grab him there, well he's going to hook around and hook into him with the other end. But see how he's got the, that's like the old dinosaur, he's got that real hard shell around the head. And you're not going to hurt us, I think he's got a little blue tongue in there. You want to kiss me? <coughs> Betty, you want to kiss the lizard? Beautiful animal, aren't they? He does no harm at all. He just doesn't like me today, but I'll give him a little pat now, that's made him a lot happier. Yeah, it's such a nice, eh? Get that bit of dirt off his nose. Yep. Now I'm going to put him back where I found him. We find the heart of the loader, a giant motor. Now as Alan publishes a magazine on buses and trucks, it's right up his alley. For that, out that, this mine wouldn't not function at all. It's not a mine here at the loading. Look at the size of the pistons in there. Eh? Look at this. Look at these. Oh. It says it's a commie croft. I've heard of thorny croft, but I haven't heard of commie croft. This is the best I've ever seen in this country. Oh, what beautiful colours. Most of the time it's just red sand with a few roly polies about. And as the wind keeps shifting the sand all the time, any permanent fixtures, like these sheep yards, will be covered in sand in no time at all, if not in use. At one time there would have been 50 or 60,000 sheep using these yards, but that was yesterday. Menindee at last. Menindee is just as sleepy as Ivanhoe. A couple of shops, one hotel in use and another one being renovated. This hotel is said to be one of the oldest in New South Wales and you can find accommodation in a couple of motels. Duty calls Hello, yet again, Hello, just you. like last time. Farewell at the Cape, now farewell in the Nindy. What an interesting way to get to the Nindy. Follow the railway. Follow the railway line. <laughs> yeah, it's good fun, mate. But we've had a couple of nice days. Yeah, yeah. thanks for the yabby catching. Oh, nothing, mate. I know you've got to go to work, otherwise, we'll do a little bit more of it. No, we'll, we'll catch you next time. Next time I see you on the trip. Keep it safe. <laughs> see you, mate. Right on, buddy. We're heading out to Pemaru Lake to make camp for the night. Pemaru Lake is fed by the main weir out of the Darling River, and we find a couple fishing right at the weir. It displays a nice pan-sized yellow belly. 
and he has just given a big calf to some of the boys to go fishing yabbies with. Sheena puts up her rods tin and Betty and I get the camper matic up in no time at all. And with the bird life and all this gorgeous sunset, there is something missing. And we realise it's Alan with his little glass of red wine. As we watch the sunset, I reflect on the trip we've just finished. West New Avalon to Menindee. Most of it on the side track by the railway line, where possible. And at times tracking off into the bush to get around water and then onto outback roads. It's been a great little adventure. As I fade into the environment, you may find me on a track somewhere. Give me a yell and we'll put the billy on together.